In this video tutorial, we're going to be discussing both flat clutches and conical clutches. In the first part of the video, we're going to be focusing specifically on flat clutches, as shown on the diagram in the top left hand corner. So as we can see from the diagram, we have two circular clutch plates which are going to come into contact with each other. The contact surface has an outer diameter DO and an inner diameter DI. Now the way that the clutch works is that one of the shafts is going to rotate. As that shaft rotates and comes into contact with the other clutch plate, then the two clutch plates are going to couple together and then the two shafts are going to rotate at the same speed. Now what we need to determine is whether these clutch plates are going to slip. So as you can see on the left hand side, we require an axial force R in order to force the two clutch plates together. When we force those two clutch plates together, we're going to be able to transmit a certain amount of torque and hence a certain amount of power. The equation that's used to determine how much power we transmit is given at the top of the screen, P equals NT. So there are a number of factors which determine how much torque we can transmit. First of all, as mentioned, we have the axial force forcing the two clutch plates together. In addition, we have the coefficient of friction between those two clutch surfaces, and we also have the inside and outside diameters of our flat clutch plates. Further down the list, we have the rotational speed, and once we know how much torque we can transmit, and at what speed the two coupled shafts are rotating, we can actually then calculate how much power we're transmitting through this clutch plate. So in the top right hand corner, I've written down two different equations that are used to calculate the amount of torque that can be transmitted. And these come from two different theories. The first theory that we're going to investigate then is known as the uniform pressure theory. And the uniform pressure theory assumes that the pressure is evenly distributed throughout our clutch surface here. Now, if the pressure is evenly distributed, then we're going to experience greater wear on the outside edge. Here, 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 and here. The reason we're going to experience more wear at the outside edge is because the outside edge of that rotating plate is moving faster. It has a greater linear velocity. If you can imagine, at the very center, the velocity would be zero. It's rotating on a neutral axis. The further away we move from that neutral axis, the greater the velocity. So uniform pressure theory assumes that the pressure is uniform across that plate, which means that the wear is ununiform. There's going to be greater wear on the outside edge. Now this theory in particular would apply to new clutches. So when a clutch is replaced and the clutch surface has very little wear, we can apply the uniform pressure theory. By contrast then, we have another theory, which is called the uniform wear theory. So the uniform wear theory assumes that the wear, or the rate of wear, is equal across the clutch surfaces here, here, here and here. Now for that to be the case, there must be more pressure at the centre and less pressure on the outside edge. As we've just stated, the outside edge is travelling faster, therefore in order for there to be an even distribution of wear, there must be a greater pressure at the centre. Greater pressure at lower velocities will give the same amount of wear as less pressure at higher velocities on the outside edge. So uniform wear theory is used when a clutch plate is older and wear has already taken place. When wear has taken place, more specifically towards the outside edges, the pressure of the two clutch plates being forced together is going to be greater at the centre because there's going to be less material towards the outside edges. So we tend to use uniform pressure theory for new clutch plates, whereas we use uniform wear theory for worn or partially worn clutch plates. And throughout this video, we'll see the impact that this has on the amount of torque and power that can be transmitted through the clutch. So we have a range of data on the left hand side, and for each of these theories, we're going to calculate the torque that can be transmitted, and hence the power that can be transmitted using both uniform pressure and uniform wear theory for that flat clutch plate. So the first step then, using uniform pressure theory, is to calculate the amount of torque that can be transmitted for the given conditions there. 
So we have a coefficient of friction between our clutch plates of 0.32 and we're applying an axial force or a linear force of 855 newtons. We then have the outside diameter cubed. We have 180 millimetres or 0.18 metres cubed minus the inside diameter cubed 0.06 cubed and we need to divide that by 3 times the outside diameter squared 0.18 squared minus the inside diameter squared. Now when we run that through the calculator we get a maximum torque that can be transmitted through this clutch equal to 17.784 newton meters. Now note that that's the maximum amount of torque that we can transmit before those clutch plates are going to slip. And this is assuming that we have a new clutch using the uniform pressure theory. So next then we can calculate the power that we're able to transmit. And the power is just the rotational speed times the torque. Now we need to convert our rotational speed. We have a rotational speed of 3150 RPM. Now in earlier videos we talked about how to convert between RPM and radians per second and our conversion factor we need to first of all multiply by the number of radians in a revolution and then we need to divide by the number of seconds in a minute. So to get from revolutions per minute to radians per second our conversion is times 2 pi over 60. If you're unsure where that's come from, then I suggest referring back to our earlier video on flat belts and V-belts. So there we have our rotational speed, and we're multiplying by our maximum torque, giving us the maximum power that can be transmitted through this clutch, equal to 5866 watts, and that's to the nearest whole number. So now we're going to repeat that, but using our uniform wear theory, noting that now some wear has taken place on our clutch plate and it's no longer a new clutch. We have T equals mu R once again, well mu is 0.32, R remains the same, 855. We divide that by four and we multiply by the outside diameter, 0.18, plus the inside diameter 0.06, giving us this time a torque equal to 16.416 newton meters. So we can see that now some wear has taken place on our clutch, we're able to transmit less torque before those clutch plates slip. This is obviously going to have an impact on the power. So the power using uniform wear theory, we have NT once again, we have 3150, which we need to convert to radians per second. And when we run this one through the calculator, we get a maximum power that can be transmitted equal to 5415 watts accurate once again to the nearest whole number. So what we've seen here is when the clutch plate's new and we use uniform pressure theory, we can transmit 17.8 newton meters worth of torque, which equates to a maximum power being transmitted of 5866 watts. Now, when that clutch becomes worn, so we begin using the uniform wear theory here, the maximum torque that we can transmit has dropped to 16.4 newton meters, and that equates to a maximum power being transmitted equal to 5415 watts. So we can see that when the clutch is worn and we use the uniform wear theory, the amount of power and the amount of torque that we're able to transmit is significantly reduced. Let's repeat this example, except this time we're going to use a different type of clutch called a conical clutch. So here we have an example of a conical clutch, and the difference here is that the surfaces of our clutch or our clutch plates are placed on an angle. So in effect, what we have on the input shaft on the left is we have a cone shape here. So the cone of the input shaft sits inside the cone of the output shaft. What we're viewing here is a cross section of that clutch. In doing so, we've introduced a new variable and that variable beta is what's known as the included angle. We see beta here on our diagram 
and we're assigning a value of beta here equal to 78 degrees. So we can see that our diagram isn't to scale, but at least it gives us a representation of what's happening within the conical clutch. All of our other data is the same. We have the same outside and inside diameters, which are labeled on our diagram. We have the same coefficient, and we also have the same axial force being applied to force our input and output shafts together, causing them to couple and rotate together. We've specified the same rotational speed, and once again, we're going to calculate the amount of torque that can be transmitted by this clutch, as well as the power. Now, once again, we're going to use the same two theories. We're going to use the uniform pressure theory and the uniform wear theory. And we'd use each of these in exactly the same way. So uniform pressure applies when we have a new clutch. So the pressure throughout the clutch plate is evenly distributed. And uniform wear is when that clutch plate has experienced some wear. So with uniform pressure theory, we get greater wear on the outside edge. And with the uniform wear theory, that wear is evenly distributed which means we must have a higher pressure at the inside edge. The reasons behind this were outlined earlier in the video. Now, because we've introduced a conical clutch and our clutch surfaces are now on an angle, what we notice is we have the introduction of a new term in each of our equations. We have sine beta added here for uniform pressure, and we have sine beta added here for uniform wear. Now we have a beta value of 78 degrees, and the important thing here is we can leave that in degrees as long as we remember to set our calculator in degrees. Sine of 78 degrees with our calculator in degrees mode is going to be exactly the same as sine of the equivalent angle in radians with our calculator in radians mode, and I welcome you to check that if you wish. So let's go through the same process as before. We're going to calculate the torque using uniform wear theory. And once again, this is the maximum torque that we're able to transmit through the clutch. We have 0.32 times 855 times our outside diameter cubed. Note that that needs to be expressed in meters. Minus our inside diameter cubed, once again in meters. Divided by 3 sine. 78 degrees, and I'll include the degree symbol as a reminder to put my calculator in degrees mode. DO squared this time, minus DI squared, giving me a maximum torque that can be transmitted through this clutch equal to 18.181 newton meters. Now for completeness, we'll calculate the maximum power that can be transmitted. We have a rotational speed of 3150, which we need to convert from revolutions to radians and from minutes to seconds. So revolutions per minute into radians per second, multiplied by our maximum torque, giving us a maximum power transmission equal to 5997, accurate to the nearest whole number. And then when the clutch is warm, so we're using uniform wear theory, torque is the coefficient of friction, 0.32, times the axial force, 855, divided by 4, sine 78 degrees, multiplied by our outside diameter plus our inside diameter, giving us a maximum torque this time equal to 16.783 newton meters. And finally then, the amount of power that we can transmit when the clutch is worn is NT 3150 times 2 pi over 60 for our conversion times 16.783, giving us a power equal to 5536 watts. So what we've seen here in both instances is that when the clutch plate's new and we use uniform pressure theory, we're able to transmit more torque and more power. The other thing that we've noticed here is that when we use a conical clutch in place of a flat clutch, once again, we can transmit more torque and more power. 
if all other parameters are kept constant. In the next video, we're going to take a desired power output for our conical clutch, and we're going to work backwards in order to determine the required thrust force in order to achieve that power output requirement.